All right, welcome to your reading. I just had so many freaking technical difficulties, and this is my back-to-back -back reading. Basically, I had to restart this like three freaking times, but here we are. So what I was saying in my intro, this is the third time I'm saying it, is that essentially, usually I only do one chart a night. Um, in this case, I have decided that because I'm getting so much more demand that and usually I do them chronologically. I have a, a list and I go one after the other, after the other, after the other. So basically what I decided um, now that I have more clients and there's, you know, I, there's kind of kind of a need for me to do like more than, especially nights that I'm, you know, there's some nights I just can't do readings. I'm just not in the, in the zone. I'm not like feeling it. I can't do it. Uh, I decided that it's best for me to try to do two if I can. So the first one is always chronological. The second one I decided I'm just going to do the one that like calls out to me the most. Um, I'm just going to do the one that like has the most, maybe, maybe it has the most in common with me. Maybe it's similar to the one I just did. I don't know, but <laughs> lucky for you, yours is that one. So if someone's watching this, uh, cause I, I also, I looked at the list too and I realized I was like, shit, she literally just bought this two days ago. She's lucky as fuck. Um, wow, there's someone else who bought it. Well, my thing is like, as long as it, like, I've never had a reading take over a month, so I will get all the readings done within a month. Um, that's a hundred percent sure. I mean, maybe not now with all the new readings, but, um, well, yeah, basically those will get done soon. But anyway, so I was going through the charts, um, on my kind of solar fire list and yours popped up. So why not uh, jump in? So let's start by showing the chart. Uh, I know this isn't always meaning so much to everyone. Um, so here we are. In essence, um, and I don't think you see my face anymore, so I'll probably just show this like once or twice. Um, I wish I, you could see my face. But yeah, basically, there's a lot of elements in your chart that, that kind of connect it with my chart. And hence why I decided to uh, do this in the back to back. So basically, okay, first of all, we're um, we're both Sag moons. Um, your sun's in Aquarius. I have Venus and Mars in Aquarius. Um, you have some Scorpio energy. I have lots of eighth house energy, which is basically Scorpio. And then all your Capricorn energy, I have like uh, Stellium and Capricorn. They're outer planets, but still, you know, I understand. I understand. I, I, the, the chart just called out to me. It just made sense to me. Um, and I looked at the aspects. I saw, okay, the sun's conjunct Uranus, or the moon's conjunct Uranus, the sun square at Mars, square at Pluto. Oof. Um, you know, we got Venus. Uh, okay, and then Mars. Okay. So, yeah, not not too like, like, uh, there's no such thing as a good or bad chart, but it's not a chart where, let's say, there's like, I don't know, um, like a bunch of like, like oppositions and squares for out of, from out of, from from outer planets to inner planets, um, those are the ones that take the longest. So, um, all right. So let's go back to my face. So okay, lighting is good. Everything is good. So yeah, basically, what do I see in this chart? Um, first thing I see is, well, first thing I like to talk about is I always like to talk about the most obvious thing, which is what is the relationship between the sun and the moon. Um, and you, in your case, you have one of the best aspects in astrology, which is sun, sextile, moon. This means that there is a 60 degree <clears throat> angle, excuse me, between sun and moon. And that, um, oh God, <clears throat> um, there's a very, like your feminine, your masculine parts of you, there's a very smooth flowing energy between them. So basically, and Sag and Aquarius, they're, you know, they're, they're different signs. One's fire, one's air. So they're both masculine. But there's there's one thing, well, several things. But one thing really important to both of them, and that's freedom. These are two freedom, freedom, freedom loving signs. And that's why they, you know, that they work well. Um, it works well to be an Aquarius, Sag. I mean, um, I'll give you an example of something that wouldn't work well is if you were like a Sag moon 
cancer son because the cancer part of you would want to stay home and be in you know way less external while the sage part wants to travel the world and do this and that um and, and gain and grow philosophically and and, and all that of that nature um so having having that and i'll, I'll go into the means of these but having you know the Aquarius sun, it does it is a very social sun sign, as you know. I don't really go too far into sun signs. I feel people have read horoscopes about them. So, so yeah. Um, okay. So, sun Aquarius, you know, it's all about freedom. It's all about um, friends. It's all about um, communicating. It's all about being different, right? It's very eccentric. They're the 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 water bearer, the one that the rebellious one, the one that beats the beat of their own drum. Um, and it's in the fifth house. So, you know, whatever house your son's in is an area of life that is very important where you're meant to shine. And that's in the house of creativity. Um, creativity slash, you know, Le it's a house of Leo. So it's, it's all about like the inner child, right? It's all about um, just doing things that you enjoy, doing things that are fun having fun with life. My girlfriend has also her son in the fifth house and she's very creative and, and fun loving and stuff like that. So it creates a fun personality. Um, with that said, <laughs> it's very interesting, you know, that you have Vlad and Lula so cl close to your son. I think of that as like real witch energy. Um, like that, that black and Lula, if it, like it's, it's very important. It's very big part of, uh, of you um it, it will create kind of a scorpio vibe but also you know it's not a planet so it, it represents um kind of the darker part of our personality so when it's in aquarius right um and and this would this would usually indicate in my experience when it's conjunct the sun and the moon that you there's a big like watch out sign about going into the lower energy of that sign so what's the lower energy of Aquarius? Detachment, aloofness. Um, sometimes it's like feeling like um, your friends fill up to live to your expectations, right? That you can't count on your friends. Um, and, you know, it, it can make it so someone is, there can be like some some level of like rejection when it comes to like friend groups and stuff of that nature, right? Um, but really, and also, you know, it's it's a uh, you know Aquarius is a fixed sign, so it can make someone quite fixed and and it airs so about ideas quite fixed in their ideas. So they can be there can be a little, especially the Sag Moon, this combo, right? Um, it can be very uh, it, it can you know Sag Moons are 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 and I'm a Sag Moon, so. Like they're known for for being dogmatic in in the sense that like it's very hard they not they they do not want to budge on their belief systems you know um they they feel like they've spent so much time investing in understanding their own belief systems right um and understand their own philosophy their own understanding of universal truth you know that they the, the guiding principle of which they live their life by so much time on that that they're basically like why the fuck would I listen to you. I like I know this stuff, and the the moon the 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 black and love in <laughs> I usually don't bring up black and love this early in the reading. That placement there next to the sun would um yeah kind of make it like uh, someone very fixed in their ideas, sometimes imposing their thoughts and feelings on others, um and maybe not even noticing to the extent to which they do it, um almost like expecting them to agree with you and any sign of disagreement can be viewed as like a lack of support. And, um, yeah. So I think, I think that, you know, just, just link with Aquarius, you know, there's always that aloofness, right? This, that's the thing about Aquarius is that Aquarius are not known, even though it's not your moon sign, <clears throat> they're not the sentimental babies at all. They're very cool. They're very cool. They're very collected. And they can sometimes be a little bit selfish, I've noticed too. Um, it's the opposite sign of Leo. Um, and there can sometimes be, I'm not saying you have this at all. Black Moon Lilith is not a part of you. It's just like a potential, like I have it in Scorpio, for example. And whenever I like get in my lowest, get triggered or something, I 
get like get super Scorpio and like I said like, like I don't do it anymore but like it's happened before you know and still there's always still that potential so there can be kind of like a god complex um like at the very like worst with, with uh Aquarius um and almost like a disconnection from reality like over rebelliousness right to the point to where there's not even really any meaningful basis in the rebellion it's just almost like you know, yeah. So, okay. With that said, how does that, that sun have to do with your third house moon in, um, in the sign of, uh, Sagittarius? <clears throat> well, you have Sagittarius moon conjunct Uranus and the south node. So interesting. So basically, um, a moon conjunct Uranus, that makes someone psychic. Uh, but psychic more in the sense of like you can see the future potentially. Like if you tap into this, you um already I just posted about Sag tonight on my Instagram. Sag moons are very, very um psychic. They're they're tapped in, right? Um so like uh you know they they, they really do know um a lot. It's future oriented. It's about knowing what's coming right um oh wait did I have... no i'm stupid i'm tripping no it was scorpio but yeah um so that's 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 pretty much that right is that um yeah like like uh <laughs> it's crazy how many clients i get that are that are sad moons i always think about that i'm like man like do, do I attract it? Because, like, I don't attract that many Pisces. I mean, the amount of Pisces clients I attract is so much lower than the amount of, like, in, like, friends that are Sag Moon. So it really makes me think that the moon is, like, the really, really the most important one. But, yeah, I was just, I was, I was reading more about, 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 about Sag Moon. And I always, it always blows me away when I re read about my own moon sign. Um, because, like, I forget, I, I forgot about that future oriented part, right? Um, I forgot about that part of, of, of Sag Moon that is basically saying, um, that it's so optimistic. It's so about the travels, the philosophy, the this, the this, the that. It's not focused on the past at all. It doesn't give a fuck about the past. Past mask, right? And I, I want to go into something. Because I don't know if you see on my Instagram. <clears throat> I've been doing like the signs and I had them all like preparing stuff. I just like been posting them uh, like one or two a day. So today I posted the one that's. Um, is it Scorpio or Libra? Scorpio. Um, I'll post Sag probably tomorrow or the day after. I might take a little break with my posting because I'm shadow banned, which is awesome. But this is what I, what I, what I, what I have about Moon and Sag. Um, so it gives someone... Okay, fuck, I say it gives someone all the same traits. But yeah, it's like very fiery, optimistic... Um, live for adventure, higher learning, all about freedom, expansiveness. Um, and there's a whole thing about either traveling physically or metaphorically. They love other cultures, right? And they're on their quest for truth and to find meaning for their life. Um, they're very generous, larger than life personalities. They get bored really easily too. They need that freedom. And sometimes they try to improve, impose their truth on others. Very philosophical, visionary, truth, uh, pur purposeful. And um, that was kind of like the sun, but like the, at the moon, I wrote, it gives all these same traits at a more unconscious level. There's an emotional need for freedom, exploration, and novelty. So that's another thing is that both of these signs, Aquarius and, and Sag, they get bored easily, right? Um, these are very future-oriented and emotionally fiery people. They're innately optimistic, expansive, and positive in their point of view. 
there's a need for travel can feel very stuck with the same old. So I know this very well. If I'm in the same place for too long, besides kind of right now, because I'm like, I'm, I'm finding different ways to travel metaphorically through like learning and growth. And I have plans and stuff. Um, like they, they, there's a real feeling of stuckness, right? Like, like the mundane, like if you're in a job you don't like, um, if you're, and they really, really love expanding their worldview. Um, so they're great teachers. They often experience life first as the gypsy, then as the teacher, then as the philosopher. They need freedom and space within relationships, and they need to always be growing from a philosophical and cultural level. They love to be right. Sometimes they can be dogmatic. I said they're very, very fun. And life of the party, opposite of a downer, they see the glass is half full. And while I'm at it, I just posted Libra. I might as well, nah. yeah, well, I'll do that after. But I, might, I, I have the Aquarius one ready to go too, so I might as well, like, just um, talk about the sun in Aquarius. Where are you? Here you are. Aquarius, I'll post in a few days. Um, maybe I'll wait. Um, okay, so I wrote, it can be difficult to understand what makes an Aquarius sun tick. They are very eccentric and nonconformist people who march to the beat of their own drum. Um, many have a mysterious type of mystique around them. So true with Aquarius. They're so hard to pin down. They're like cat people. Um, they are very concerned with social justice and compassionate people who want to change the world for the better. It's bizarre that when these same people can be so apathetic and detached from their that these same people can be so apathetic and detached from their own emotions, which I talked about before. It's hard to understand what amazing people. I said a lot of the Aquarius women that I, that I've met have like great style, very 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 independent, um, often very beautiful. My experience, but I also have Venus and Mars in Aquarius, so I tend to be attracted to Aquarius. So it could be subjective, very group slash friend slash humanitarian oriented, and motivated by by the need to find their individuality within the context of the group. They need freedom resistant to change slash input of others. So I pretty much said all that stuff. Well, I'm at it. Let's just throw in the Libra sign. And it's a small little writing. So and I'll talk about this next. So it's really cool because your Libra. So Libra's two. So when it's, it's two signs away to the sextile and there's a smooth flow of, of energy between two. So check this out. Libra. Sag is two signs away because it goes Libra, Scorpio, Sag. That's a sextile between your ascendant and your moon. And then Sag goes Sag, Capricorn, Aquarius. So it's literally a, um, a sextile, 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 sextile. Everyone sextiles each other. And then there's a trine, which is four signs away, which is also really smooth between the ascendant and the sun. So basically what that's saying is that like you as your big three, it's like a motorboat going in one direction. It's not like one going this way. One, it's not like two fish, one going this way, one going the other way. Like me, where I have the Sag moon that's so physical that wants to do all these things, wants to travel the world, and the Pisces sun that wants to just meditate and be emotional. So, okay, Libra sun, and we'll get into this too, how it connects all this. And I'll go back to Sag moon, don't worry. They um, experience life as a constant series of choices. Thus, deliberation and carefully chosen actions become the hallmark as they consider everything from the various points of views involved. It's an air sign um, concerned with fairness, equality, um, and right human relationships. Thus, they are likely to feel the need to be objective and fair in all their dealings, which may be somewhat crippling if a decisive um, decision or resolution cannot be reached. Reflective judgment is key. Blah, blah. For, that was weird. Weird. My eyes were like, for their quest is to find the right principle in a given situation and then commit to it. So that's the thing with Libra is that they can be very indecisive and there's a, there's a, and let me see if you have this fixed star. You might. No. Yeah. Uh, if you close to speaker, but not quite there. If you're born a few minutes later, you might have speaker <coughs> rising, which would be amazing. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> you do have, wow. You have Aldebaran. Your moon is conjunct one of the royal stars. Aldebaran. That's unbelievable. 
when I tell you unbelievable, I mean unbelievable in a Trump voice. <clears throat> I can't do it, but my voice is cracked. So you have Antares, the the star. Antares is like the hidden king, right? Um, it's one. Of, it's it's with Regulus, like you know, in Fomalhaut, um, Regulus Fomalhaut, and um, Aldebaran. These are the four royal stars. Uh, Speak is kind of like a, another one that's really important, but those are the four royal stars of Persia. To have your moon ascendant midheaven, um, con- those three especially, conjunct one or, or any angle, and yeah, your sun too, but really those ones, it's so, so important. Um, and this is amazing. So that can really be good for riches, um, but it's also really good for esoteric knowledge. So you have like this really, really like, wow. There's some real psychicness to you. Um, and let me see what else, if I see anything else. For now, no. So um, I'm happy I, I pulled that because I wouldn't have seen it otherwise. So with, um, we'll talk about the, the Libra Ascendant and then we'll go more into the Sag Moon. So the Libra Ascendant, it's like, it, it presents very beautifully. It's like, it's like, it usually creates like attractiveness. Venus rules your chart, so you're, you're someone that's very warm, and um, conflict is not something that you like, right? Even though you are, you have a Mars in Scorpio, um, which is conjunct Pluto and Saturn, more, more closely conjunct Pluto, that can make you quite explosive on, like, a psychological level, but the Libra rising will always be the scale. So, like, you'll always kind of have this energy of, like, like a lot of Libra risings, you're born in 84, yeah, so you probably already learned the lesson, or maybe you're still learning it, about the people-pleasing. Right. Because Libra risings, they want everything to be balanced in their environment. So sometimes they can like put other people before themselves and it can really be detrimental to them. Um, and it can keep them like in toxic relationships and friendships and stuff like that. But having your chart ruled by Venus makes, uh, you know, uh, the qualities of your Venus and Capricorn, which is conjunct Jupiter, um, very, very important, which we'll talk about because that's a very interesting position to also have it conjunct jupiter and neptune and we just had a neptune um jupiter conjunction so that must have been like a, a feeling a new invigorating like a, um when was it it was it was, it was in, in april yeah april wait end of march or april but anyways yeah it was probably a very invigorating time for you uh almost like a new spiritual like like probably really felt something amazing so that's the thing with yeah with Libra. It's, it's very sweet. It doesn't like to rock the boat too much. Um, but you yeah you really have to watch out for the people pleasing and um, and uh, what else? And you know it, they they'll 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 be very very good like with things like design with with the arts um, and. You know they're more they're more it's it's masculine so they will kind of it is a cardinal sign so so it's like they will be like um there there can't there there is like initiative right but it's very very sociable very courteous like they're the best diplomats the best pol- I don't want to say politicians says fuck pol- politicians but you know what I mean they have tact they really consider the other person when they speak um, and it makes relationships super important so this is what's really interesting right. Um, cause like, you know, human, uh, human relationships are the primary motivation in life. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, it usually makes one either like physically very attractive, um, and, or just someone who like has like an aura that's very welcome and inviting, welcoming, and inviting. Um, and a lot of times they can have like work connected with justice, mediation and something di- diplomatic. Even counseling, right? Like marriage counseling, that kind of thing. Like like negotiate, yeah. So okay, <clears throat> um, so we'll we'll talk about the 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 moon, and then and then we'll go into the, the Venus, which is the ruling planet of your chart. So the moon conjunct Aldebaran, um, basically, um, Aldebaran. So so the way it's been described to me is I'm just um, starting to learn more about this old uh, Babylonian astrology. Aldebaran is the hidden king. So while Regulus, I have Regulus rising, by the way. A lot of like really famous people have, I'm not famous, don't worry. I don't think that. 
Um, but it's like the, the the most bright Leo, like the most Leo of Leo of Leo is Regulus. Alderaan, or excuse me, what am I talking about? Antares, Jesse. Um, basically, is just like um, like the hidden king, right? So it's like it's it's very uh, you know esoteric and um, it's very it creates a lot of of, of um. It can, it can, it, it depends. Like, it, uh, definitely some esoteric knowledge. And <clears throat> when you have your moon there, it's very good for popularity. It makes one very, like, even more philosophical. You're already philosophical. It makes one super, like, um, wide minded, um, super into philosophy, metaphysics, maybe science, even. And you are an Aquarius. So, Aquarius, you know, rules technology and science. Um, it can make one very opinionated with like philosophy and religion and spirituality. Also, it can make one have very influential friends. It's really good for business, domestic matters. Um, and it, it, it brings wealth, honor and wealth a lot of times. But they may not prove long lasting because it's the moon. It goes up and down. And um, yeah, so it's a very, very strong placement. And um, let me see. Hold on. Okay. And sometimes there's issues with the eyes. So I don't know if you have glasses or something. And where's it? Says, Gemini, where's Gemini, where's Gemini, where's Gemini? Okay, Saturn, okay. Thank God, because it said if Saturn is conjunct Aldebaran, um, then there is likely death by hanging. I was like, come on. Please no. Please no, Lisa. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the fact that's conjunct Uranus, that makes you, that's Aquarius energy even more. So that makes you super rebellious. It means that you can like, when you meditate, you can get like these downloads that come to you from who knows where. Um, you're not, you're on an emotional level though. So this is the thing that's interesting. You're in relationships, you're going to need tons and tons of space. You're like me. Um, but this, there's there's going to be a conflict that you're going to see coming up next. And this is what, why um, um, I do the astrological counseling. I, I just uh, you know wrote about that a little bit more. I'll post about it uh, um, at some later time. But like, essentially, with astrological counseling, we can go deeper into, into different, um, what you would call it, themes in the chart and different splits. So in this case, um, there's part of you that in love wants the freedom it wants like you know the space it wants the unconventional relationship has the you 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 you, you know sag moon's like i'm a sag moon my girlfriend's romanian i i would never it's not that i would never date an american but like i'm just not i never really was interested in many americans even when i lived in america i dated girls that were like not from there mostly and to be honest i i didn't have like I don't want to say success. I mean, I, uh, okay. I, I wasn't happy in my love life in America. And now this has turned into Jesse's love life hour. But now I'm very, I um, have a great girlfriend. And yeah. Um, so besides that, Uranus conjunct moon is going to make one an emotional need to be different. An emotional need to beat to the beat of your own drum. So it's going to really play well with that, um, with that Aquarius. You're going to be a rebel but not a rebel that rocks the boat to piss people off necessarily, although that could happen. But um, this is linked to your your, your past life because your south node is there. So what does this mean, Jesse? What does this mean? Well, it means that in past lives, <clears throat> it's all in the third house. So this is about communicating. So you could probably be someone that if you did automatic writing, like a union, like automatic writing, where you like you, like you meditate, you get into that, like that theta state or whatever, and then you just like write without thinking. Um, you probably are an incredible writer, maybe even an author, who knows? Um, poetry, I would love to, see, to read the poetry that would come from someone like you. I would absolutely love it, especially Libra ruling your chart. Yeah, but this is the thing, the Venus, we're going to have to get into that. Um, so that's the main aspect with the moon is, is these conjunctions. There's no squares um, of, of, of importance, um, no squares and oppositions. Um, so yeah, and, and the fact that that, that the moon, that, that the south node's there, part of fortune too, it's just basically saying that like in past lives, Sagittarius has been your planet. 
and which makes total sense because the, the the moon re reflects our instinct right it's like our emotions our feminine side but our instincts it's like what we need to be happy what we need to, to feel fulfilled what we need to feel safe so for you to do that to feel that way you need to feel like yeah you're growing yeah your 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 worldview is expanding um but also that they're that you're um i guess like the, like the new the shiny and the exciting plays in but you can imagine how already being an Aquarius, right? This would make you very, very aloof potentially in relationships. Enter the second part. And okay, before that, like just the fact that the South Node's there, it's just saying in past lives, <clears throat> um, in past lives, you you were someone that um, was also like this. It was also the, the 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 person that wasn't afraid to be different. And when I said witch vibes, I have a feeling that right when I said witch vibes you probably like were like, yo, I've thought about that before. And now I'm singing again. Cause maybe you had some past life issues. Maybe not issues. I don't see any. Yeah. 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 Um there could have been that. Um with the uh South Node ruler, which is Jupiter is conjunct Neptune and and uh the chart ruler. So the South Node ruler conjunct the chart ruler um you know this life and in, in the la in the last in the last life lots in common um and yeah there's there's just this this theme of like in this life you know being like this very philosophical person um and in this life it's about seeing seeing things from like other people's point of views that's very important for you because you know you you have all this air. So air gives the ability to really see from the other other's point of view. And developing the higher mind is super, super important for you. Um like uh yeah, like really broadening broadening your perspectives, like really trying on different types of philosophies, whether it's astrology, whether it's like something else, I don't know, examples. Um, like going to a different country and learning like some something that's important there. Um <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, so yeah, another thing is like is is communication and learning and, and really getting getting in tune with the communication. Mercury has no difficult aspects, but um, you know there can be a, a past life tendency of being like a little bit scattered, restless. Gemini South Node past life in the ninth house there can be this yeah, but there's 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 definitely this karmic imbalance between the Gemini and the Sagittarian um, modes or I guess opposition, which to me reflects. The need to not trust all information, to go out and find information, right? Um, and uh, also communicate your ideas in a way that helps many people understand them, like like digestible communication. Um, <clears throat> so it's like a mix of like being like the journalist that goes out in the world, right? Which is your North Node, that like goes out in different countries, that goes out in the world and collects information that then ties that information to um their overall philosophies a mix of that and not being too much like just taking whatever people tell you at face value as being true <clears throat> because that may have gotten you in trouble in past lives who knows right um although with you know the the nodes i don't see any squares so it's it's not like I, i'm not i'm not seeing like past life trauma in your chart from this standpoint at this point um okay so we get the moon we get what sag moons need we understand this so, okay what about the fact that venus rules your chart and it's in its very difficult position very it's in its fall position of capricorn now this would be very very tragic if it wasn't conjunct neptune and jupiter Having this is beautiful. Having this is helpful. But Venus and Capricorn has trouble with self-love. Once they get to their Saturn return at around 30 years of age, they start to open up and become more vulnerable. They're more willing to, to love themselves. And then when they're willing to love themselves, that's when they have more potential for 
relationships that work. You understand me? So you may have had trouble with your relationships. Oh, that Jupiter's like, I'll give you some, we'll give you some, some, some okay luck. But um, yeah, usually Venus and Capricorn's like, um, you know, Venus is like, it, it, it's love language. So it's also like how we love ourselves. So Capricorn, that has to do with it's Saturn's restriction. So there's lots of restrictions. Um, it could have, rep- um, and then your son is square Pluto. So you know, you could have had a father figure that was very intense. There could be some trauma related to that potentially, or whoever the more dominant parent was. Um, not all, the, not all the time though. And then, and because you do have your moon and your son in a in a sextile, that usually indicates that that there's um, not like a really negative energy between your two parents themselves, but, um, you know, potentially you could have had like a, there could have been like this power structure that played out that in, in, in the, in the, in the family in some way that could have affected you difficultly. And also with siblings, speaking of family, there could be like a really deep emotional attachment to siblings. If you have any, and with Uranus there, there could be like, sometimes people will have this, they'll have like siblings that they like long lost siblings. Like my mom, she just, I guess they're not, they're half sisters. She's just like, um, I don't really want to voice this. So basically she just, yeah, she learned, she basically just like learned, um, I don't know why I, I literally talk about this publicly. Why can't I, voice, why, why would I wouldn't, wouldn't I voice this? Basically like that, that she has these, ha- these half siblings that she didn't know about. Right. So that totally plays into to, to like the third house Uranus. That's like an example or like having like a half brother, half sister, step brother, step sister. Um, something like that, or just a very unusual relationship with a sibling, or a relationship that's very, very karmic <clears throat> with a sibling, and that's based on this like maybe a sibling that's very similar to you in that like Aquarian, like eccentric kind of way. They might not have the same astrology, but they might be very similar, maybe twins. Um, so you know, with the Venus um in Capricorn, like I said, it's difficult for for self love. Uh, the sad return is way easier, but there's not difficult aspects, thank God. Um, and in love, Venus and Capricorn, they really, they care a lot about their love language is like, I want someone who takes themselves seriously, who takes this relationship seriously. I want someone who cares about their success and who cares about them growing in their, like, like, okay, what, ter- what, uh, not turn on, it's on Jess. You don't use these words, especially with a, someone who has a Mars and Scorpio. <laughs> we'll talk about turn on later. Um, which is a very, very sexual energy, the Mars and Scorpio, as everyone knows. But um, Venus and Capricorn like to make one very shy in relationships, um, but they'll be they'll really like someone who knows what they want in life, right? Who who um who 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 fa- has found their purpose. So sometimes they're more attracted to older partners, more mature partners. Also, they can be very shy in relationships um, and they're formed very slowly, but they have the potential to really last a long time, especially after 30, very enduring. And they, they're able to really get through the, you know, how some, some people, they get in all these relationships, they have that first fight and they're like, I'm breaking up. Uh, Venus and Capricorn people, like they can stick through the tough times. Solid. Rock. Because Saturn is rock. Solid and <laughs> just like, Sound like I'm on coke, uh, coke or something. I don't want to say that word on YouTube. Um, also, in terms of money, so this is spending. This is really good for money. So you already have that Antar- um, Antares, um, and you have a lot of second house energy, which you do have Saturn, which would indicate that you may have come from a poor background, but you've probably made something of yourself. And the fact that you have Jupiter conjunct Venus, which Venus represents spending, in Capricorn, it would make someone usually quite... Um, responsible with their money and their possessions and quite like um responsible conservative um but also fortunate so there's like an abundance with the with the jupiter and venus in the fourth house like um they like you know that's like um someone who wants to create a beautiful home it kind of creates like a home body like someone who who in their relationship wants you know to have the family they want something serious they want to build like I always give the example of like the solid foundation of like when you're building a building, not that you're building a building, but like if, we're, if me and you were building a skyscraper, we would spend a lot of time with the foundation, the underneath part, and then we just build that shit up. With um, this, it's similar. 
it with but just with relationships. So anything that's like so this is the conflict, right? So this is like this is the conflict. This is like what I do. This is my specialty. This is how I bring um, the psychology and astrology together. The parts. How does this? And I'll explain how the Mars and Scorpio conjunct Pluto plays into it also and kind of teams up more with uh, this Capricorn part. How does this play with that really aloof distance part? Think about it. There's two parts. There's one part that wants to be super close, that wants to, uh, even though Capricorn's not super, super close, well, Scorpio is. But before I go into Scorpio, let's just talk about that conjunction. Um, so the Neptune conjunct Venus, I don't care what sign your, your Venus is in, it's going to add a, so much romance. It's going to add someone who might have rose-colored glasses in love. Um, they might expect perfection in love. They might be disappointed and disillusioned by it. However, the Jupiter is going to make them very lucky in terms of the partners they meet. And uh, especially after 30. So the whole thing is self-love. Once the self-love is learned, everything is, is possible in the positive, most positive sense of, of, of what this uh, Venus and Capricorn can represent. Now it's in the fourth house, so it's like, you know, that's the opposite house of of uh, of, of Cancer, being that you have a Libra ascendant. Libra ascendants are um, everything's opposite, because the first house is usually Aries. Uh, it's so hard to explain this, but basically, like, it makes it to like every house, um, every planet is in the the opposite house, because each house is is ruled by a planet. The first house is ruled by Aries. And it goes all around until you get to 12th house ruled by Pisces. Now, because your first house is ruled by Libra, which is the opposite sign of Aries, um, it just like makes it so like uh, like for example, the second house is is Taurus, is, is you know it's a Taurus house. You have Scorpio in there, which is the opposite sign, so it creates a a, a, a karmic conflict. Anyways, um, and it, I think what it what it does, it it really allows the, the person to see things from different from like a lot of different perspectives, which goes further to this real karmic need for you to, to have that in this lifetime. Really, really like expanding the higher mind and the lower mind. Um, and by lower mind, I mean like, you know, being able to have the conversations, the little small talk stuff like that, the little things that add up. All right. So, okay. So, okay. Let, let's talk about this. Um, okay before that <laughs> sorry jupiter okay so jupiter um conjunct venus is like one of the most best the best aspects you can have it's amazing for money it's amazing for popularity it's and it's going to actually make so a lot of the self the potential the self-esteem issues that would come from a venus and capricorn are going to be really mostly pushed away just plain and simple jupiter is your saving grace and it's going to it's going to really really um give good good results for for money and relationships but you're still probably going to have to have learned some difficult issues, probably more around the Neptune conjunction with the Venus. Um, with that said, uh, Venus and Neptune also creates incredible creativity, which, like I said, you have your fifth house sun, which can make creativity a huge part of your life. Um, and uh, basically, Libra rising, right? That's like the art, the painter. That's like the physical act. I always get this. Or like the singer. Um, Neptune is the imagination. So a lot of people only have one of the two, right? You have both. They're connected. So you can really be an amazing, and, and Jupiter's there, so it gives you the, so this expansiveness and this perspective to it. So it's very, very beautiful. Okay. So now the, the Scorpio part of your chart in the second house. So Scorpio Mars is very, very sexual. It wants to experience... Um, and when I say sexual, I mean sexual energy. It means that lots of like energy, psychic energy, sexual energy. It's like it, it's very like present. Like it has it's like this real, real like like built in lie detector. It has this real ability to cut to like it's like a super strong. It's it's a indignity Mars. It's like the psychological warrior. And when it has Pluto there, you're someone that when you put your mind to something, you just go after it. Now, as it relates to sex and relationships. It wants to break through sexual taboos. 
and um, experience things a little bit differently. Um, now, how else can I say this? You see how 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 it's very close. Like it's all about. It's not just sex. It's like in romance, the Scorpio archetype is about two. It's like two souls coming together, soulmate, twin flame energy, right? So it's very strong and because you have Mars in dignity. It makes your Mars super strong. And because it's in Scorpio conjunct Pluto, it's even stronger. So this is definitely sex. It's sextiles your um, energy in Capricorn, right? Because it's two signs away. So essentially what that means is that we have one part that's the Scorpio and the Capricorn that's way more serious in relationships. That's more like, you know, wanting to be close, wanting to have emotional closeness, wanting to have build something that lasts. And then another part that wants, um, like, especially with the moon conjunct Uranus, that wants to pull away, that wants freedom. So um, and we don't have a follow up. If you do decide to get a follow up, which I highly, highly suggest, um, that would be what we would talk about. We, you definitely have to make notes about that as well, um, because. I'm very curious, and even if, if you don't do a follow-up, I would love to, to hear some kind of write-up. Um, I'm very curious how this plays out, basically, is what I'm trying to say. How this 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 uh, this split, as we call it in psychology, plays out. Um, is there like a ten, like a, a cycle of like push and pull? I want you now. I don't. I need space now. I want you close to me. I'm just curious. Okay, moving further, um, you know, Sun square Mars can create anger, it can create impulsivity, it can create like uh, reactions that you sometimes regret, especially like when you're younger, and especially since there is a uh, Mars and Scorpio. Mars and Scorpio just doesn't like BS. It doesn't like people who try to manipulate it and who try to essentially make it like, 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 a, 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 um, insult their intelligence insult their intuitive like kind of like spiritual intelligence so they have to watch out and they get better with age they handle this but it's like a, mach a machine gun they're like i don't know i was trying to think of like a powerful weapon i just said machine gun um at its best though you know mars and scorpio you know can be channeled into a high spiritual practice maybe like some kind of tantra um it can also make one very dramatic and this this square is going to do that too, and uh, like I said, very strong sexual urges, and um, yeah, Mars and Scorpio usually are the people you don't really want to mess with in the sense that like they, well, I said that, but I've met, I, so many of my friends have this, and they're they they it's more like when they're young because squares get easier after like you you know you start maturing spiritually, which most of my clients, according to me, have gotten to that point. So. Um, yeah, with that, it's just like what it can be. It can it can create someone who's very competitive and who, yeah. But like I I've seen it just like like the person who's like gonna stand up for the underdog type energy. And with your Pluto there, it makes you also a very deep prober. So in the second house, you're a, a go getter when it comes to money. But with Saturn there, that can indicate that you came from poverty and that you could be very very conservative when it comes to money, right? A lot of people that have the second house, Saturn's, I'll give you an example of someone, I'm not going to say names. Um, they're very, very wealthy, incredibly wealthy. Um, but they have, they, they were born in a very poor family. They, you know, they, they, they became very wealthy throughout their life. And they're very old. And they, they haven't bought a new car in 20 years. Their car is falling apart. And they just won't buy it. They, they just, it's just, they, they have, it's like, it's like stuck within them, embedded within them that, that like not to spend, even though like what the fuck's the point of money? You know, if you're not going to spend it. Um, obviously, saving is good. But that so it can create like um, someone super conservative when it comes to money and stuff. But also it's great for success. Um, it's great for saving up. It's great for, and you know, combined with those other elements in that chart for someone that just like goes at it in their career. Now, Midheaven you have it in um, cancer um, and that's a really strong part of the chart. You know, lots of businessmen have, have sons, their sons at like the end part of cancer. 
Um, maybe you're someone who does real estate. I don't know what you like, um, you know, what you do. Maybe you're someone who, you know, your career is more around nurturing. Um, who knows, right? I don't know. But I definitely see like, um, like a lot of times, like this type of chart, which I would love to hear back from is someone who came from, from, from maybe not like dirt poor, but like, you know, usually like pretty poor. They worked their fucking ass off to get, you know, to get to where they wanted to get. And they had this, this superpower of Pluto and Mars together to get, just to move further, fat, further and further and further. To just like climb, climb and climb. And I'm going to get my little Pluto book um, and tell you a little bit about Pluto in the second house. And you can still hear me while I walk away. I just grab this, this book. I sometimes do my readings from my desk, um, but I wanted to be on my couch today because it's a comfy couch. Um, okay, here we are. Get some water. Okay, very good. Flap de bide, as we say in Romanian. Um, okay, let's see. So, this book is from when I first started. I wrote all this. Um, it's not like my actual book I wrote. Um, it's available on Amazon. It is, yeah. It is this. It is this book. So, okay, Pluto in the second house. Here we go. So Pluto ha represents your shadow. It's like the darkness. It's like what you have to overcome and go deep within. So for you, I would imagine already just the conjunction with Mars on a karmic level that there's some level of like in Mars is square sun. You might have like tantrums or like anger that like, like uh, your sun's in Aquarius. <sighs> How does that connect? Let me think. Give me a second to think. It's fixed. Yeah, because usually sun, yeah, like sun square Mars can, and sun square Mars and Pluto. Yeah, so there, so so there can be this real potential for you for someone that has this to not realize. Okay, so this is the, going back to the black moon love to not realize the emotional impact that their explosions. And this is probably more when you were young. Um, volcanic explosions um, can have on other people. Right. So imagine like, let's say like a situation comes up, right? Let's say like uh, a friend does some shit that pisses you off or whatever. Um, or your partner or whatever. You explode um, because Mars square sun. OK, another thing. Oh, I, I'm so happy I said this. You need a physical like outlet like like if, w sex is one of them. It's common. Um, but there needs to be something that you're getting that that physical Pluto energy out. Or it can, it can be very frustrated. Um, bike riding just came to my mind. I don't know why. Hiking, stuff like that. Something that's intense where you can really, really, you know. Um, but also, like, there has to be, like, a, a spiritual outlet as well. But anyways, um, yeah, the Pluto and the Mars, I would just imagine that, like, what happens is that there can be these explosions. And then that Libra ascendant part is like, fuck, because Libra doesn't want to disappoint everyone. It's a peaceful one. And then there can be like kind of like the sadness that comes from that. Okay, here we go. So over lifetimes, people with this had an ongoing need to develop self-reliance and internal security. These people are often harboring memories of prior lives in which survival was threatened, right? You have Pluto here, too, or Saturn here too, so this is double that. Survival was threatened or they had to develop simple coping mechanisms in order to survive intense and difficult experiences. Experiences. Um, so they have developed an innate fixed identity as the basis of inner security through coping with experiences that threaten their identity. So I'm going to repeat that. They have developed an, an, eight, an innate fixed identity as the basis of inner security through coping with experiences that threaten their identity. Past life spent in survival, in survival mode lead to the karmic potential for stuckness and habitual self-imposed limitations which hinders the soul's potential for growth. This can often involve money, um, leading to excessive or distorted significance applied to money. They can view money as their savior that can prolong life and give it meaning. So the saving point is the eighth house, the polarity point. And I wrote in quotes, as a person begins to individuate, which is what your Aquarius son is all about, 
Their identification with external things as expressions of personal power lessens and the, and the identification with the self increases, um, which then becomes a central resource. Um, I need to reread that. I just went out. I, I didn't. I just went out to another space land. As a person begins to individuate their identification with external things as expressions of personal power, lessens in their identification with this. With their identification with the self increases, which then becomes a central resource. So it's all about withdrawing from the world, um, which is at, necessary at times in order to clear the prevailing consensus influences. And to reconnect with personal values, so that's important for you to to have these moment, these times where you're um, like leaving other, leaving the world, and also it's like also learn to work with others. Like teamwork is super important. So yeah, that's that's like really really playing well. And of course, like so 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 we can imagine how how with Mars there's a hustler attitude. I'm very curious to know like how that's how that's resulted. Um. Yeah, so that's that. Um, and then Mars rules that chart, which is in its own house. Um. So, Neptune in the fourth house. Or actually, actually, no. Let's go through this real quick. So yeah, Sun square Pluto. I mean, it, it's just this explosive energy. I don't know how else to explain it. it. It's it's like the fact that Mars and like uh like like uh Mars and Pluto, our square sun, it's very tense. Um, I imagine that you probably like, uh, yeah, like, uh, the, like I said before, like the, the, the black moon Lilith, um, cause Aquarius can be detached from like the emotional impact they might have on others. It can make one like be really, really intense and create lots of ego conflicts. Um, and it has to, completely everything to do with being in control of situations, right? Um, so, yeah. And, um, basically, it makes, like, um, the big thing is um, learning to have a more relaxed attitude which comes from higher consciousness and spirituality and having that physical outlet. And you will go through this, like, uh, usually early in life, this is the impetus that pushes you to that journey of the underworld where you have to go through this death, rebirth, transformation, the dark, the dark night of the soul. And uh, a lot of times you live out secret taboos in the sex life, the occult, and sometimes addictions. Um, and even, like, Later in life, people that have this, like they get past it, but it can still, it still can come back, you know, like, 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 like it, it can be like really powerful. Like, Whoa! well, you're lucky your son's not an Aries or like, you know, it is an Aquarius. If you're in an Aries or Scorpio, you'd be like a scary, scary person. But yeah, so yeah, it's, it's all about like channeling the intensity into, into hard work, basically, and being ambitious and um, less concerned about the competition because sometimes it can make someone want to like step on the competition. And uh, like, like, yeah, like more concerned with the team and, 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 and not see everything as a threat for every person. So, yeah, Mercury um, in uh, Capricorn, that makes someone like value, which more traditional, like like um, information. Um, they will be, you know, like more hands on. It's usually very good. Boy, that was really weird. My cat just like jumped up. I literally like like the side of my face. It like looked like he was like floating up. That was weird. Um, but usually like the way they learn and talk will be like kind of logical and methodical. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any like important stars that are like making conjunctions. Yeah, Vega. Yeah. So Vega is a very, very, very good uh, star. Um, and let's see what Vega does. I'm still learning a lot about, I just finally, I have two books coming to me about the fixed, fixed stars and I'm learning, learning quickly. Um, but Vega, you know, that, that's one of the, the better, more important benevolent, um, stars. Um, and, uh, you, you have it in orb and then what else is there? It's, uh, 13 point. 
thirty. So yeah, it's within one thirty. So yeah, it's an orb of the Mercury. Um, wait, hold up. Okay, and is there another one? A cella. So let's let's just look at a cella because it's conjunct Mercury. It's exact conjunct. Wait, is it exact exact? Thirteen thirty eight. Is that what I just said? Thirteen thirty. So it's point zero eight. But I don't know anything about this one. Let's see. Um, good fortune to have me. Okay, let's see what it says about Mercury. Um, it's very glorious. Great for writing. Um, but it doesn't really get too much information on, on the Mercury. Um, Jupiter and Mercury. So yeah, it, it's it's good for for writing and um, fortune and happiness. Um, yeah. Anyways, more important, Vega. Vega um, with Mercury. It says suspicious, reserved, bitter, thwarted ambitions, double dealing, secret enemies in influential positions, trouble with the mother, loss of business. This is the, the problem I have with these. Um, like, like it's so hard to find information. That's why, like, I have these books, these sacred texts coming, um, because it's really hard to find like things that aren't like a thousand years old. <laughs> Um, let's see if I can find anything, anything that gives me some real information. Okay. With Mercury. Yeah. It says exact same thing. Suspicious, reserved, bitter, thwarted ambitions, double dealing, secret enemies. Yeah. Trouble with the mother, loss in business. So maybe that resonates. Who the fuck knows? Um, okay. So let's get rid of all of these. Okay. We're already over an hour. Um, okay, so th then you have Neptune on the descendant, so that is very interesting. So, so childhood with Jupiter and Neptune, the, the Jupiter there is going to create like an uh, unconscious optimism within yourself, and um, usually around the childhood, but um, like kind of like a, a more positive childhood where there was love with Venus there and communication with Mercury there. But then with with Neptune, there can be this, and I think it'd probably be more more this dreaminess, the spirituality that came from it. But also a lot of people that have that there, um, they can like sometimes have like like trouble remembering the childhood. But in a in a in a different house system, this would be third house, and it, it would speak more to just like this very very creative mind and amazing writing skills. Um, so yeah, um. You know, Mercury in the fourth, that, that creates someone who likes to, like, work from home, communi communicate within their home environment, um, have their home be, like, a place of um, learning, right? They like, like, lots of books and, and uh, yeah, like, like, exchange of information within the home environment. And, uh, yeah, a lot, yeah, so uh, lear learning a lot from your family, within your family environment. So, okay. All right. So then a little bit more about love. The, the Juno, Asher of love is in um, Taurus. Basically what that's saying is that you're really looking for a rock. Like in, in, in Taurus, like the Juno represents like what you look for like in a marriage, like, marriage marriage and you know, like 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 i'm not married but my girlfriend she's a scorpio my juno's in scorpio so it's like what you look for in the ideal date while the venus is more about like it's it's more like dating more kind of like love language you know like like the capricorn venus they, they show they, they show they love by their actions a lot of the time right like the earth the the virgo and capricorn venus yeah like the kind like a uh, Capricorn Venus person would be the kind of person that like would give someone like the gift of like, of course, not you as a Libra rising and an Aquarius and so unoriginal, but they'd be like someone who gives someone like a for their birthday, like a check. <laughs> um, so. What's next? What's next? What's next? OK, so uh, Mars rules your seventh house, so that could indicate like um, some some fighting within relationships, um, some explosions. Eris is in there, too. Um, and, um, 
yeah, like I'm curious to hear if we ever do have a follow up, like how power struggles and power games played out or have played out in relationships. Um, and if that whole soulmate process, how that worked out with the fact that like there's the Neptune conjunct Venus, which makes someone like like no one ever good enough a lot. Like also another thing with Capricorn Venus is that like, yeah, it creates that like no one's ever good enough for late, like um like 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 uh like super, super high standards in relationships. So yeah, um, what else have I not spoken about? Okay, Chiron. Um, oh yeah, Juno. I was just talking about it. Juno in uh Taurus, of course, is um in eighth house. Um, basically, you're looking for someone who you can go through really intense experiences with that lead to death, rebirth, and transformation of old parts of yourself within relationships, but also someone who is your rock that's consistent, very very similar to that that Venus and Capricorn, like someone who is willing to build a solid, solid foundations. All right. Um, Chiron the eighth sometimes can, can can do with sexual trauma. Not always. It's in Taurus, which is the body. So there can be issues around sexuality, um, maybe feeling inadequate sexually. Um, and it can make one like, uh, you know, Chiron and Taurus, they want to heal through their body. So they'll do a lot of times they heal through yoga. Um, they can they can feel like a like early in life like a like lack of self worth or where they like overcompensate by like just getting money and possessions, um, and they can also really distrust their body. That's why yoga is so such an important thing for for that um, and learning to to to, to you know to, to to rely on your own body and experiences. Um, so besides that, you know the fact that it's in the eighth house it makes one kind of inadequate sex, uh, sexually. Like, like I said before, um, also very painful um, when it comes to like, like, uh, like you just can really sense the undercurrents of, of the world. Um, but like the whole point is that you can become like a very intuitive healer where you heal through your intuition. So then Vertex is also in that house. Um, you know, Vertex is like a second ascendant um, in the sense of, of relationship. So in relationships, you'll probably appear to be kind of like consistent in that, in that, in what, what I just said, like the Juno, like, like, um, it's conjunct vertex and your doorway to higher awareness is, you know, is through consistency. It's through, um, the senses, through engaging the senses and engaging the body. And also, um, through a finding groundedness, finding grounding within yourself, within your body, within every day, um, where you're waking up and you have like a set routine. I'm not, I mean, I'm not really seeing routine all over your chart, but just like where you have like things, whether it's like a force you walk, you walk in, you know, something that like gets your senses involved, um, that get that, that really relaxes you. So, you know, mid heaven ruled by the moon in Sag, you know, maybe your career is linked to traveling or, or, uh, philosophy in some way. Um, Maybe, you know, like it could be like a teacher or like or someone who's who's teaching in some way. Um, like I said, real estate's a possibility because it's full by homes. Um, but, you know, midheaven and cancer really makes what someone want to have a very safe and secure profession. Um, and caring for others is often a key in it. And they'll have they'll be like a very strong emotions about uh, the public status. So, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and of course, in the tenth house, yeah. And then North Node, ninth house. I talked about that already. Um, you know, it's it's uh the higher mind, lower mind, like like balancing that out. Um, not being too narrow minded, which you may have been in past lives. Um, North Node ruler is uh you know Mercury in. It's in um conjunct vega in in uh capricorn so i don't know i'm curious i'm also curious about like because when you have mercury and capricorn that's like the person or it's usually mercury and taurus but uh mercury and capricorn i guess it, it's it's kind of it's not conjunct those other ones but it's in the same house i'm just curious like if you if you maybe before thought like astrology was bullshit and I'm, I'm curious how you had like your spiritual awakening or whatever so I, I guess actually it would make sense because of your moon sign that would actually push you to that. So never mind. I, I, I actually understand that part of you because the Aquarius is making you so unconventional. 
um, and then the, the, the moon in, in, in Sag also, you're going to want to do the opposite of what they want you to do. Um, and very curious about like how it was with parents too. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. I'm so proud of myself. I kept it to 70 minutes. I'm trying, I need to keep reading this to 70 minutes because it's like, yo, like, gets intense. But I, 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 I want to just look at a few other things really quickly. Just um, go through some asteroids just to see if there's any other conjunctions I missed. Um, basically, like, for, like, um, seeing if, like, Oh, oh, I know what I need to look at. 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. Oh, my battery's running low. That's not good. That is not good. Okay. We're good. So let's see what it says here. I said 19 Libra, 1947. Okay. Okay, nothing really. Um, two cap. Okay, let's hit that one. That's, and then 10, we talked about that already. And uh, seven, seven. Oh, yeah. So you have uh, Mars. My Mars conjunct your um, sun. Exactly. That's so cool. I don't think we have any. We have Boss is the name of the asteroid we have. I don't even know about this. Um, so Boss, B-O-S, is conjunct your sun. Um, it's in the nature of Saturn, Venus. <laughs> Shameless, very immoral. <laughs> sorrows and love okay but let's let's see but it really depends on like if it's sun moon okay so let's see what it says about sun jesus christ where the fuck is the sun it doesn't give any information besides that Zelensky has it well let's see if i can um gain some information Wait, I was thinking about that. No, that was that's different. Because I'm looking at the Mercury thing. I think it just it, it it can it can be potential for like clairvoyance. Um, that that's that's what I'm getting at. Um. But the star itself is very revolting. There's there can be uh it's it's um let's see. Yeah, so with Saturn and Venus, um it could also relate to like how love gets better um after the Saturn turn. Um love and self love gets better. So I'm also really interested in knowing if you do end up getting the, the follow-up, um, how your life changed at around 29 and a half slash 30. So there's less of them. Okay, okay. Okay, so whatever. Screw that one. I guess there's not enough information to tell. So this one, Spiculum is conjunct all that, that Capricorn energy. Let's see. And it's mostly the Jupiter, also the Venus. So let's see if they have anything about it there. Okay, so it says Venus, similar... Um, okay, so, so this is not a health problem, but it's concerned with the joviality of a person. It is a jovial type individual who overindulges in, overindulges in many things. So that's very interesting, right? You see how the spic stars come in and add a lot because the Venus in the Capricorn usually is not like that. The advanced astrology right here. So they would be considered the happy-go-lucky person who does not particularly care what others think of, think or say about them. They do not care what type of situation they're in. They are plain, simple, and happy type beings who are very uncomplicated. They would just as likely sit in a pig's to eat the dinner with their dog 
out of the same plate. They prefer to eat in a slovenly manner that often others are see as unacceptable. Karmically, these individuals were tied to strict social circumstances in a prior life, which totally shows by the second house, like the poverty and stuff and past lives. Uh, and are not and and we're not now given this break in order to fully relax some social amenities in this life. These persons are likable beings, but others are unable to take them to any social events as they would prove to be quite embarrassing. Okay, come on, it's a little bit a little bit intense. Um yeah, so that's pretty much everything. I hope you enjoy this reading. I hope that my you know, this actually let's let's look at eight Scorpio, eight, two, and fifteen. And then we'll we'll wrap it up. Oh, you have this one. Okay. And 15 was what? Saturn. So there's. Mm, wait, 8. 8.20. No, nothing. Okay. So. With the princeps, let's see if there's anything with Pluto. Not much. Um, and then Zubin lending a newbie. Is that the one that's the writing one? Because there's Zubin Shamali and Zubin Jin. I think Zubin Shlami. They're very similar. So it is um, Saturn and Mars. Bold, cruel, heartless. Okay. Um, and that is your Saturn's there, right? Yeah, let's see what's good with this one. So you can quit some, someone who's very quick tempered um, and where there's issues potentially with, with marriage. I gave it to you how it is. I'm not like a uh, just giving you all the best parts of the astrology. I say, I say how it is. A lot of astrologers will shy away from that. Um, often escapes justice, jealous. I don't know. I do not know, my friend. Um, and well, at least you, you're not at 19 degrees. So, all right. Um, it's just one more thing. Let's see the relationship asteroids. See if any of them are rising. A7, so close. Nope. Lucky, though, because Dionysus, without his rising, that one has to do with like alcoholism and stuff. Um, okay, nothing there, nothing there. Okay, this one's close. Uh, no, it's not really close. Okay, Psyche. No, it's, it's like just far enough away. But that would make sense because that would make you like even more like really con con like like very philosophical, really really wanting to learn deep about, about the psyche of, uh, of humanity, which is totally linked to other parts of your chart. Um, okay, nothing there. Okay. All right. Uh, hope you enjoyed. I felt like this was like one of my better readings in a long time. Um, so, yeah. Bye -bye. And if you want to, oh yeah, if you want to follow up, message me. Um, we can figure something out. So, hope you're good. Ciao.